for McCall's pattern 6044 as well as for most sewing these are some of the basic tools that you will always need um, you will need some pins don't dump them out like I just did you will need if you do not have a serger you will need pinking shears they look like alligator teeth you will need some regular fabric scissors you will need a point turner Another alternative um, is chopping sticks. I honestly don't recommend using the point of your scissors. Some people do that. Um, personally, that's never worked out well for me because I end up punching a hole in whatever it is I'm trying to turn out. You're going to need some fray check. This is what it looks like, fray check. Optional is hem tape. You don't have to have this. But for some, um, they just prefer it gives them a neater finish on some of the um, hem lines that we're going to be doing. Again, this is optional. I always recommend some little small um, scissors for cutting. Seam ripper, of course. The friend we love to hate. A marking utensil of some sort, water soluble or heat um, erasable, it really just depends on your fabric. Make sure you pick a color that's going to show through on the fabric that you're using. I like this small 18 millimeter rotary cutter for cutting my buttonholes. However, you do not have to have this. You can use your seam ripper as well as there's also a buttonhole cutter. Again, you don't have to have these. You can use your seam ripper and I'll show you how I use this as well um, as the um, rotary cutter. And you're gonna need a seam gauge of some sort or some sort of ruler. And of course, pressing spray. This is Best Press. It's in a different bottle, but I like using the Best Press. Um, honestly, used it for years before I started sewing, and I just love it. And you're going to need an iron. I cannot stress how important ironing is or pressing is in sewing. And it's one of the steps that I think a lot of people skip. And it causes so many issues down the road when you're trying to get things to fit nicely. So those are all the supplies that you're going to need as we begin to make McCall 6044. Okay, tuned. so for the actual sewing, there are some additional items that we are going to need. You are going to need, of course, thread. This is Guterman Mara 100. Um, Guterman is also carried in most quilt shops and Joann. Um, it's a good thread. I like it. I use it a lot. Um, but you are going to need some sewing thread. This is 40 weight. You're going to need a fully wound bobbin. You're going to need some sewing needles. I'm going to be using, since I'm, I'm sewing on cotton, quilting cotton, I'm going to be using a Schmetz Universal size 8012 needle. Um, there are other brands of needles out there. I know a lot of people who use organ needles. Um, I pre personally like the Schmetz. Um, they're easy to find and they work well for me. So this is what I use. And again, I'm going to be using 8012. I'm also going to need my universal foot for my machine. I sew on a Bernina, so this is um, how my all-purpose foot looks. I also like to use an edge stitch foot. A lot of machines have edge stitch feet, um, or an edge stitch foot, I should say. You don't have to have a Bernina. Um, as you can see, the design of the foot, it has this little plate in the middle, and it just allows you to easily guide the edge of any piece of fabric that you're sewing up along that guide so that it just takes the guesswork out of where you're stitching, your positioning. So again, I am going to be using an edge stitch foot. This is my buttonhole foot. It's going to make our lovely buttonholes for our shirt. And I also, my machine, 
will sew the buttons on. So this is my button sew on foot. Again, you don't have to have this. There are other machines out there that have a button sew on foot. Um, you can hand sew your buttons on. Personally, I'm not gonna do it because my machine does a good job at it. And typically if I'm just sitting down, I'm not gonna be sewing on buttons. I'm working on something else. So this is my button sew on foot. And those are all the tools that you're going to need for the actual sewing machine. Needles, feet, and thread. Okay, I'm gonna be making McCall's 6044, and I'm gonna be making view A without the breast pocket, the chest pocket. I am not gonna be making that um, simply because the person wearing it does not want that pocket on there. So I'm not going to do that. Everything else I am doing um, just as the pattern calls for. So again, McCall's 6044 View A is what we're going to be making. So our pieces for View A, and this is all construction only. This is assuming you know how to cut out your patterns. You know how to interface your patterns. You know how to make your um, pattern markings, notches, dots, etc. So we are going to need our collar band, which is piece 13. There's two pieces. We are going to need our collar, piece 12. There are two pieces. I have interfaced both pieces. I think the pattern just calls for one piece to be interfaced. I can't remember 100%, but I like for both pieces to be interfaced. Um, so again, this is the collar. This is piece 12. This is piece 11, the front bands. Piece 11, there are two pieces. We have our sleeve. There are two, right and the left, of course, our sleeve. And then we have our front, which is, actually this is our back. It's cut on the fold, so it's one whole piece. This is our back. I believe that's piece two. Um, and then this is our front. It's two pieces. This is our front. All right, so we are gonna be starting with our, there, let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna be covering some steps that the pattern does not, um, and it's just because I've done so many well-written patterns and learned, you know, extra little tips on things to do. Um, this is such a basic pattern. I just think that they kind of leave out some little tips and tricks, which is okay, but I'm going to do some of them as we make this shirt. So the first thing that we're going to do because I'm not doing the pocket is we are going to take our back piece. As you can see, this was folded. That's that center crease down there. We are going to take our back piece and we are going to join it with our front pieces at the shoulder. All right, so this is my front piece. This is my back piece and we're gonna be joining them at the shoulder. You should have notches at the top in both pieces. You're gonna match up your notch. So I have a notch here that I'm going to match up and pin. And essentially the shoulder pieces are just supposed to match evenly at the raw edges even if you forgot your notches. Notches are very key. Your mark, your mark, pattern markings period are key when sewing. So accurate cutting and making the appropriate pattern markings, it's like half the battle. The other half of course is the actual sewing. So there we go. We have 
our shoulders matched up on our back and front. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side. And then we're gonna go to the machine and stitch using the given pattern seam allowance of 5 8 inch. Now, another little thing I do sometimes, and this is that I know I need a slightly bigger cut than what the pattern calls for. So instead of doing all that resizing of the pattern, I will actually just sew with a smaller seam allowance. And of course, you know, consistency. So I, you know, what I do to one, I have to do to the other. Um, but that's just another little tip for later on for, I have several patterns that I do that with. So again, we have our front and back pinned at the shoulder seams. We're gonna stitch from start to finish with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. We are going to back stitch at the beginning as well as the end. And we'll be back. Okay, so I have stitched the front to the back at the shoulder seams, as you can see. Now what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to um, be using a serger. So I'm going to go and serge this seam down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then we are going to press the seam towards the back. I'll show you what that's gonna look like. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna serge this. If you do not have a serger, you can use pinking shears. And that's why we said that we needed pinking shears at the beginning. But I am going to go ahead and serge this down, 3 8 inch seam allowance, and I'm going to press the seam towards the back. So this is what it looks like from the front. It's all pressed down nice and neatly. Okay, if you look at it from the other side, so you can see what I've done here. So this is our back piece and this is our front piece. So as you can see, I surged it and then I pressed the seam towards the back. Now what I'm gonna do, and this is, the pattern does not tell you to do this, but I'm gonna do a little bit of top stitching on the back side just to hold that pressed seam down. Again, the pattern does not tell you to do this, but I am going to do that. So this is what it looks like now. Okay, and you can't see the top stitching because my thread color blends in with the shirt, but there, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. So there, there's the top stitching that I did, okay? Okay, now we're gonna be working with our sleeve. So I'm gonna take a sleeve and I'm going to take the front and back that we just put together. And we are going to be attaching our sleeve. Now, the pattern tells you to e-stitch the sleeve. I just felt like I didn't have to do that with this, so I'm not going to. But what e-stitching is, I will tell you, is you're going to do... So you have notches in your sleeve. You have two notches on one side that indicates the back of the sleeve and then you have a single notch on the other side and that indicates the front of the sleeve to create ease stitching you're going to do two rows of stitching in between those notches so what you would have is what i normally do is um about three eighth inch I do a row of stitching in between the notches and then at the seam allowance, which in this case would be 5 eighth inch, I do a second row of stitching and it's a basting stitch. It is not a permanent stitch. It's a basting stitch. A basting stitch is the longest stitch length that your machine will do. So when you create the E stitches, those two rows, 
they're basting size stitches. And what that does is just gonna give you some room to pull the thread to gather in the sleeve a little bit so you can ease it in to fit it into the arm. Again, I'm not gonna do that because I, I feel like with this particular size and with the fabric having a little bit of give, I didn't really have to create those um, ease stitches. So what I'm gonna do, again, remember I said your double notch indicates the back of your sleeve. The single notch indicates the front of the sleeve. So what does that mean? That means the side with the double notch needs to be on the side with the back piece of the shirt. The side with the single notch needs to be on the front portion of the shirt. So what I have here is my shirt. Okay, this is the back section. And if you look, you should have double notches on the back piece and you should have a single notch on the front piece. Okay, so on your sleeve, you would have transferred a dot. In the pattern, it tells you that that dot is supposed to match up with your shoulder seam. So what I'm gonna do is put a pin through there and I'm gonna come to my shoulder seam and run my pin right through that seam to make sure I get this matched up. And then I'm gonna pin, okay? And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna match up my notch match up my notches on this side. And pin. And then I'm gonna match up the end. Matching up the end and pin. And then I'm gonna come on the other side here and I'm gonna match up my notch. And pin. And I'm going to match up the end and pin. And then I'm gonna go and work my way around and pin the rest of the sleeves together all the way around. So I have the sleeve all pinned together. This is just one side. And I'm gonna go and pin the other side. And then what we're gonna do is again, with the same seam allowance, we're gonna stitch from the start to finish all the way around with our normal stitch length. We're gonna back stitch at the beginning as well as at the end. Okay, so just a little repeat. We have our sleeve, right? We would have transferred a dot on our sleeve. One side has a single notch indicating the front. The other side has a double notch indicating the back. We are gonna take that dot that we made and that is gonna be placed at the shoulder seam. So I stick a pin through the dot. I run a pin through my shoulder seam to make sure I have that lined up. And I pin, okay? I then come over, I match my single notch with my single notch, single notch, single notch. That's the front of my shirt. And I pin, and then I match my raw edge my side raw edge here, and I pin. I come to the other side, and I take my double notch with my double notch, and I match it up. And I pin. 
I then pin my raw edge, my raw side edge, pin. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to finish matching up my sleeve and I'm gonna pin. Again, I did not do e-stitching because this has a little bit of give. So I just didn't feel like it was necessary to do the extra. I have switched back to my regular foot. I have switched back to my normal stitch length and moved my needle back over. And now I'm going to stitch my sleeve. Making sure to try to keep it flat and keep the extra fabric out of the way from getting caught. Sometimes I nail it, sometimes I don't. No big deal. That's why we have our lovely friend, the seam ripper. No need to be stressing about things that can be corrected. So, just try to keep it as flat as possible. Any extra fabric out of the way. Remove my pins as I go, and I think I just dropped one somewhere, so I'm going to have to watch that when I get up with no shoes on. Again, don't run over your pins. Do not run over your pins. Do not run over your pins. And I just heard it drop, so I know it's right under my foot now. Again, just pulling that coldness out of the way in hopes to not catch a fold as I stitch. at the end where I'm going to back stitch again and some of you be, may be noticing that I'm not hitting a button or anything to back stitch when I start but I am back stitching my machine is programmed to do that at the start as well as now when I cut my thread it's actually giving a back tack at the end so just in case anybody's noticing that like she's saying back stitch but she's not doing it so Okay, we now have our sleeve stitched on. This is what it looks like. I always kind of look at it from the front, trying to make sure I didn't catch any folds in it because I'm not doing my ease stitching. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to press the seam. Again, I'm gonna press it up towards the back. So I'm going to press it towards the body of the shirt. And then I am also, actually I'm going to trim. So again, you can use your pinking shears. I have a serger, so I'm going to serge. And then I'm going to press my seam upwards and do again, my little top stitch. Okay. So I'll come back and show you what that looks like when I'm done. So again, I'm top stitching down my seam on my sleeve and I've pressed the seam towards the um, body of the shirt. So that's the side that I'm top stitching on. Again, top stitch with at least a three millimeter stitch length.
see how I eased into the curve and the machine just naturally wanted to take it? A lot of people struggle with curves and turning, but the machine naturally wants to pull the fabric in that direction. So just kind of guide and ease into it. It's not a race. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the other sleeve. How my sleeve looks and it's all surged up so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining the side seam and the sleeve and stitching in one continuous stitch so this is one side of our shirt We've got the back, we've got the front, and then there's our attached sleeve. So what we're gonna be doing is matching up our seam line on the sleeves, pin, match up our notches on the side pin then I go and I match up my raw edge and this is why I say cutting and um, pattern markings is like half the battle because sometimes if you don't have not sometimes but if you don't have those markings you don't know what's supposed to match up where where you're supposed to stop and start stitching those markings are key in many patterns. Not as big of a deal in this one because this pattern is so plain, so basic, so everyday of what we wear. You know, you can you could figure it out without the notch. But there are tons of patterns out there without those markings, you're completely lost as to what you're supposed to be doing. So I've pinned up the entire side. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is one continuous stitch from the, our sleeve all the way down to the end of the shirt. We're going to back stitch at the beginning as well as the end. Okay, and then we repeat for the other side. And our body is, you know, pretty much kind of constructed and we can now see the start of a shirt. So this is what... Our side stitched together looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like on the outside. So again, I have a serger, so I'm gonna go and trim this seam allowance down to 3 8 of an inch. You can use your pinking shears here if you'd like. Um, actually, you should if you're using cotton because this will fray. So go ahead and use your pinking shears. Um, I'm going to serge and I'm going to press my seam
So I'm stitching up my side seam. Again, we do not run over pins. For various reasons. One, breaking a needle. Two, throwing your machine out of timing. We don't run over pins. Some people pin to the left so they don't have to pit, uh, pull the pins out. Um, that's awkward for me, although I am learning to do that um, since I'm learning to quilt. But it's just very awkward. That's one side seam. And now I'm going to the other side. My seam allowance is 5 8 inch. So here again, I'm top stitching my side seam. I press the seam towards the back of the garment and I'm top stitching from the sleeve underarm all the way down the side. So this time I'm on the opposite end of the garment. So um, what you're going to see me do is just move my needle over to the other side because that's the back of um, my shirt in this position. This is what the shirt is looking like. We've got sleeves. We've got a front and back. It's coming together.